starring Loretta Young. Hello. Talent is the theme of our visit tonight. And of course, as you know, there's so many kinds of talent. For instance, what a fine actress like, well, Helen Hayes can tell us in a word or an attitude, Harry Lubin, our musical director, conveys in a note or a melodic strain. And in a moment, because of a letter, we're going to follow a Schumann symphony back over a hundred years to the sights and sounds and people and places that are its theme. And now turning back to our letter tonight. It's from 15-year-old Edward Mead. And he says, I have been studying the violin most of my life. In fact, music is my life. Now my parents are crabbing at me for not going out with my friends more often. They just don't seem to understand that nothing and nobody is as important to me as developing my talent. Ed, I think perhaps Robert Schumann's music probably speaks more intimately to you right now than anything anyone else has to say. And it could tell you of another great artist, too, Clara Schumann, his wife, and of her thoughts on talent. I saw that room first on September the 12th of the year 1840. Oh, it was the happiest day of my life. In that room, I knew joy and despair, life, hope, and music. Music first of all, music last of all. Oh, Robert, what a lovely surprise. Mrs. Schumann, your kingdom and your slave. Oh, and what a lovely husband. Oh, Robert, it's a beautiful room. Look at that chair. That darling little chair. Do you like it? Look, Robert. It just fits me exactly. Oh, where did you ever find it? Well, that's my secret. Oh. Look at that cabinet. The work on it. Robert, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Oh. The music master. You admired it once. Oh, Robert, you are so... Sweet. And this table. Oh, Robert, it's lovely. On special occasions, we'll eat in here. You'll sit there, and I'll sit here, and, and the children will sit there and there. How many children are you seating? Oh, dozens, dozens. Immodest woman. Oh, darling, we must have at least a dozen children. <laughs> You've missed the most important thing in the room. What? going to enjoy working here? No. No, this is for you. Oh. I put my piano in my study. Oh, Robert. This is for you alone. Oh. I could hardly marry the greatest concert pianist in the world and not give her a piano. Oh, you're sweet. Mrs. Robert Schumann. Mrs. Robert Schumann is delighted. make you happy, Robert. But that's what I'm supposed to say to you. No, no, no. It's different with us. Oh, your friends probably think you're not getting a very good wife. While other girls have been learning about cooking and caring for children, I've been learning nothing, Robert. Nothing. Nothing? Why, you've been learning to speak with these hands and some of the greatest voices of the world. But I... Beethoven, Bach, Schubert. You've won the applause of the whole world. Of royalty. Robert. Of... Don't speak as if any of that were important. But it is important. Why, music has been your whole life. Yes, it has been my whole life. But not now. Now you are my life. And music will assume its proper place. 
A part of it, but not all. I don't want you to give up your music. Why, it was music that brought us together. I remember the first time I saw you. You were 13 and you played the piece I had written. I still hold that in my memory. Robert, this is no time for a long discussion on music. This is the beginning of our world. Our first home. Our first hour. Robert, coffee. I'm selfish. I want every clock in the world to stop right now. Yes, I want us to remain just like this forever. If I could write the music that I hear now. Oh, my dear, I'm sure it would be beautiful. You, you are very beautiful. And you are very handsome. <laughs> Do you suppose that everyone talks like this when they're first married? Oh, no, indeed. No, no one ever felt like this before, Robert, I'm sure. Other people have been in love. Oh, no, not like this. No, no, this began just with us. Robert? Robert, I want you to promise me something. Promise you'll never leave me. Leave you? <laughs> leave you? Robert, I had the strangest dream last night. I dreamed I followed you up a mountain. And when I got almost to the top, suddenly you were gone. I couldn't find my way up or down the mountain. Robert, I was so frightened. I woke up crying so hard. I thought I had married a woman. It's a child. A child that cries over dreams. Oh, if I lost you. I think I'd die right you lost me. Don't you understand what you mean to me now? No, what? Tell me. With you, I have a new confidence, a new sense of dedication. I can express myself now as I never could before. Oh, you've become more than just a woman to me, Clara. You are my music. Don't you know what that means to me? My music. One musician to another. I can pay you no greater compliment. As a musician, no, but. Well, there's work to be done. The words that I had spoken a few short weeks before echoed through the room till death do us part. Why did I think of death? Why did I think of partings? Why did sorrow come sifting through my heart? I did not know. I only knew it was suddenly cold in that room. That empty room. That was so full of music. How many times in how many years did I gaze out that window? Who can say? Not even I myself. But somehow I associated that window with every mood of marriage. Joy, anger, tears, happiness. I remember a summer storm. Thunder mingled with pain. And waiting through the long summer night to hold our firstborn in my arms. Splendidly. But how do you know? My dear fellow, please give me a little walking room. Now, well, look here. Having a baby is a very important process. It can be dangerous. A lot of things can happen. Doctor! She's in pain. Robert, 
I want you to go into the kitchen and fill every large kettle with water and put it on to boil. And I don't want you to touch this door until I open it. She'll be all right, won't she? Trust me. I don't know why it is, but husbands always seem to need more treatment during confinements than wives. How is she? Go in and see for yourself. No use asking you for water. I'll get it myself. How do you feel? Wonderful. <laughs> Isn't she lovely? <laughs> Have you ever in your life seen such tiny little hands? play the piano, just like you do. Maybe she won't want to play the piano. Well, of course she will. She's our child. She'll feel the same way about music that we do. And what is that, Robert? Music is our life. Is it? Well, of course. It's the only way I can express myself. Clara. I have no words to give you at this moment. Oh, my dear. This matchless moment. Yes. But I can give you music. Robert played that night was full of glory. And yet I wept. I wept without knowing why. I held life cradled in my arms, and Robert had turned from life to music. with three more lovely children. That room was home to me. There's no other room ever had been before or ever would be again. I was always sorry to leave it, yet periodically we had to go off on a concert tour to earn money for our daily bread. Robert sometimes called our children the little people and what dear little people they were. How it hurt me to leave them. I played concert after concert in most of the capitals of Europe. And whenever possible, I played his music. The wonderful new music that he was writing. The immortal signature he would leave behind him. There was applause. There were honors. But none could approach the warmth of coming home. And if I should die before I wake... Oh, I should die before I wake... I pray the Lord my soul to take. I pray my Lord thy soul to take. Good night, guys. Good night, guys. Good boy. Mama. Yes, dear. Is Papa going to work all night again? Oh, well, I hope not, but he's composing a symphony. He's always and you know... composing something. Well, of course he is, dear. That's your father's work. What would happen if he stopped composing? There wouldn't be any music in the world. <laughs> well, at least there wouldn't be any like his. Now, you run along. Relax, and then I'll get you something to eat. No, I, I, I don't feel like eating. But you didn't have any dinner, and it's not good not to eat. No, Clara, please. I, I finally got that passage the way I wanted it. Robert! Why? I, 
had to tie it. My hands got to the point where they wouldn't grip. It's oh. funny the way the fingers wear out quicker than the brain. Robert, you must stop driving yourself this way. It's wrong. Wrong? Yes. I'm doing the best work of my life. I'm at the very peak of whatever creative power I have. Oh, you're writing magnificent music. There's no question about that. But don't try to write it all at once. Oh, my dear, you're a human being. And you must rest and eat and live like a human being. Do you know that you're becoming almost a stranger to your own children? And to you? Oh, no. No, not to me, never. But, Robert, I am worried about you. I think you're losing all sense of proportion about your work. A talent has to be disciplined. It has to be kept in its proper relation the rest of your life. Not put before home and children or families. Oh, first things first, my love. But suppose a talent will not be disciplined. Suppose a man tries to leave. Suppose he locks the piano, refuses to pick up a pencil, but keeps on hearing music louder. Louder and louder until sometimes he'd give his life to shut out the sound of it. Oh, Robert, my poor Robert. What good would it be to try to rest? What rest would there be for me with music beating, pounding, drumming in my ears? Robert, we'll go away. We'll go way up into the mountains someplace where there isn't even a piano. What you need is rest. I know it is. Maybe when we... When I finish the symphony, we'll try. No, Robert. Not when you finish. Not when you finish now, Robert. I can't leave now. Not now when I'm doing my best work. But you can come back to it later, Robert. No, I can't leave it. You should know that. You above everyone. But is a symphony worth your health? Your life, perhaps? The symphony is my life. But, Robert, you're lost if you believe that. Then perhaps I am lost. Robert. Don't work anymore tonight, please. I thought don't. of how I want to begin the next symphony. Oh, Robert, please, I beg of you, don't work anymore. Oh, you stop interfering. child that cries over dreams. Oh. oh, Robert. I remember the first time you said that to me. What? What were you dreaming? I, I dreamed. I dreamed that I was out in space. And I kept calling to you, Robert. And I called so loud and you didn't hear me. And, and then when you finally did come and look down at me, you didn't know me, Robert. Robert, you didn't even know me. Oh, Clara. Oh, Clara. Oh, please tell me again that you'll never leave me. Please, Robert, tell me you won't leave me. We were so young and sentimental in those days. Oh, please, Robert, please tell me you won't leave Stop. me. Stop Let me tell you instead that you've been all a man could ever hope to find in a woman. That in all my life I have loved only one woman. And I will love you forever. What do you mean by that? I want you to leave me, Clara. Leave you? Oh, Robert! What are you saying? What's to the me? end of Please, Robert! What's the end of my hour? I stand alone now on the brink of... I don't know what. No. 
certainly of a realm where no one can follow me. No. No, Robert, listen to me. We'll go away someplace. I know there's an answer to this. There is an answer somewhere. There was I'm... an answer. You knew it all along. But it's too late now. No. It's too late. Robert. Robert. It's not too late. There's a reason for your dreams. Oh, you must leave me. Robert, I'm no. a prisoner now of my own music. I can shout at it. Scream at it. Oh. Run from it. But I cannot steal it. Oh, Robert. Oh, God, what I would give for one moment of silence. One moment of absolute stillness. Oh, I am lost. I am lost, Clara. No, no, you're not lost. You're not I don't lost. want you. I want you to leave this house while you still love me. No! I don't want you here, Clara. I want you to leave while you still are married no. to Gary. Clara, I don't want you. I'm warning you, Clara. Stop it! I feel as though I had been born in that room. I know that in the darkness of a certain night, I died there. Oh. Clara, you must prepare yourself for a shock. Robert? He threw himself in the river. He's dead? No, no, he's not dead. But Clara... Robert! The room that had been my bridal room held four strong walls around my grief. I played his music then, played it for myself, played it for our children. Music and memories were all we had left of husband and father. It was over two years before I was permitted to see him again. Yes, my love. So beautiful. So kind. So wise. Oh, Robert, I'm going to take you home. You're going to have all of our love and our... So one period of my life ended. I had been young when I first entered that room. I would never be that young again. Nor would I ever know the same warmth, the same happiness or love again. Within those walls, a love story had had its beginning and its ending. But the music of Robert Schumann would live forever. Mr. Shakespeare had something to say about this, and I believe it rings a bell. They are as sick that serve it with too much as they that starve with nothing. Well, good night. See you next week. <laughs>